Okay, it is Monday morning. We are leaving tomorrow, Tuesday. This is the first time this truck has moved under its own power on a very temporary driveline setup. So we brought it to Elite Fleet Automotive to get the alignment done since the whole front axle had to get moved and new whole front end parts and all that stuff. They're gonna get an alignment knocked out on it real quick and then uh, there's still some major hurdles. What do you think, Gavin? The tranny works, that's yeah. all that matters. Gavin did an overnight rebuild of a tranny, converting it from four wheel drive to two wheel drive. Yep. And uh, it moves. Yeah. Well, first, first, got first to reverse. First to reverse worked great. That's we'll, all that matters. We'll figure out two, three, four, five later. I'm sure it works fine. Hey, Moose. Where's Maggie? She's somewhere over here. Oh, there's Maggie. What's this glorified tractor doing here? <laughs> A pretty sick Bluetooth front drive shaft. Yeah. Well, look at the uh, <laughs> look at the homemade temporary uh, intermediate shaft. So there's a slip yoke out of the tranny, and that drive shaft has a slip yoke in it, and we tack welded it. So it's a non-slipping slip yoke. It's a non-slipping slip yoke tranny. As Urgent. long as it has a like, nice hot tack weld, man. No, it's... So like I said, today's Monday. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, Ben and Kevin worked on this thing like crazy. I wasn't able to, I had uh, to work myself uh, for like, you know, like my real job. And uh, they made a ton of progress, including giving, getting it to where it can actually like move on its own temporarily. It's not gonna make it to like Utah, how it is right now. So that's the biggest hurdle at the moment that we kind of have a solution for, but it's also not like the ideal solution. Who made that or just like a, CES? Okay. Custom exhaust specialties. I did not your, your, your neighbor not is right across the street over there. I did there. not see that. That looks good. So, at this point, our biggest hang up is the drive lines. It's not a hang up though. Well, be. as far as driving it there right now, because none of the drive lines could get measured out until all of this got replaced. Which and there's no drive line shop local to us that has time to, to turn something around in three hours. Correctly. Luckily, you know a really good driveline guy who was able to knock these out on the spot over the yeah, phone. Brian at Driveline Tech in Hurricane, Utah. And there's the problem, in Hurricane, Utah. That's where we're going. <laughs> so... They'll be waiting for us. What this has in it right now to make it where it can move in the shop is the rear driveline that's not actually completely correct. And then this intermediate shaft that you can see it's just one that was cut and extended to make fit in here and then since that's a slip yoke on the transmission and a slip yoke here that's not okay so it's that one's just tack welded so that it won't slip and come out of there which means it isn't going to make a thousand mile road trip no i mean no it's not safe for a thousand mile road trip so what we've decided to do is we are going to put this on the trailer behind my pickup, tow it to Hurricane, Utah. When we get there, whatever evening, we are going to go straight to the driveline shop. We're going to drivelinetech.com, Brian's shop first. They're gonna put drivelines in. And then Merlin Johnson's coming over from Merlin's old school garage. And he's gonna tune the diesel injection pump and set the timing correctly so it doesn't sputter when it starts. So once we do that, it will be good to drive and wheel and do all the stuff while we're there. Yeah, and actually probably Paul and Ben from Fabrats will probably be there too because everybody knows we're coming and what we need. So, so we need all hands on deck when we get there. So this truck is not going to get done done in time for the road trip, but we'll get done while we're there on the trip. And if you want to see it, it'll be in the Yankum Ropes booth at the vendor display all three days. Correct. So grand total number of days from the time you got this truck to the time it had to leave today is day 13 day 13 days and tomorrow we're will be exactly 14 days from the day i got it home. and basically rebuilt from the from the rear main seal and the front axle to the back of the truck nope nope forward of that because the whole motor had to be remounted oh yeah motor had to be remounted new serpentine belt new serpentine belt tensioner new power steering pump new lift pump new uh, injector o-rings uh, new starter, dipstick, complete exhaust from the turbo back, including the downpipe, transfer case, transmission rebuild, front axle had to be gone through, the rear axle, both front and rear suspensions had to be redone, 
The entire brake system had to be fixed. The power steering system had to be fixed, which we still have to check now. Um, transmission rebuild, transfer case And complete. converted from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive yeah. and extra transfer case delete and new drive shafts. Yeah. Oh, and new all new transfer case mounts and transmission mount that had to be custom fabricated. That is what's left of the rock sliders. <laughs> In 13 days? Yeah, today's day 13. So 16 hours a day, two guys all day, every day, non We didn't take a day off. All, all on a truck that was advertised as a daily driver. Yeah, you can haul with it, chase the Baja <laughs> yeah. down, drive on your ranch, daily driver. Yep. Every time I read the ad, I get more frustrated. <laughs> Whatever. Hi, Mr. Casey. Brandon, of all days to not wear your Elite Fleet Automotive shirt. You mean the shirt that's underneath? Yeah, I'm totally like filming and your logo is not even visible. There we go. See how close you got. Hey, uh, do that thing where you tell people what this means. Okay, let's go to the other screen now. So this is your toe, and right now both of them are even, but they're pointed to the left. With it being a straight axle, you only have total toe adjustment and the steer ahead. So on a normal car, you can adjust with um, inner and outer tie rods. So on a straight axle, we look at this screen. Total toe is in the red and steer heads to the left, like it shows up there. And we also are out of spec in the camber. Caster's not bad. But I don't think we can adjust camber on these. No. So it's just going to be a toe set. So in the grand scheme of things with what the computer says, how bad did it, us redneck guys do with just measurements of the tape measure? Total toe is not bad. Uh, you just not quite there with the steer ahead. But there's a lot of play in that steering gearbox, so it's kind of hard to get it centered. So I mean, as far as redneck tape measure and what you guys did, got pretty close. I stocked it with fluids already too. So we have starting fluid, 1540 oil, gear oil, brake fluid, coolant. Well, I don't have his ATF on there yet. Are you doing that thing where you stand in front of the lasers while Brandon's doing his alignment? Oh yeah, probably. I'll stand back. <laughs> he's, he, he's much nicer than I am, he won't say it. <laughs> So yes, the, the trailer is not the ideal we were hoping for to get this thing there, but after all this work that's been done to it, like it needs to be there one way or another, it is going there. And the other thing is like, we actually have to kind of like, you know, make it to the event. So if we got stranded halfway through, it wouldn't be super ideal. Well, and let's go back to something that is, that the viewers know about from a long time ago there's a good chance that that black ram that you drive every day might break down on this, the way. This, will be, yeah. Th this might get unloaded, hooked to the trailer, and the black ram might go that's, on the trailer. That's, I don't want to, I'm not wrong. You're not wrong. I mean, we, we, we like to take chances with everything. Yeah, that's the, you're, you're not wrong. We uh, might, you know, there's another black ram out there that I know won't break down, but you know, yeah. it doesn't have a topper on it. It doesn't have all the storage. So we're still risking it a little bit. The tow rig is not 100%. We're, we're just going to be risking it with heated seats instead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will put a screenshot right here of what the highway we have to travel on looks like because yesterday a snowstorm moved in. Yeah, Today it, it dumped like crazy. Today it's cleared up um, and my hope is that I took a screenshot of the highway traffic cam yesterday. Um, Hopefully today that, that melts off. That screenshot that I got on my phone did not make me feel warm and fuzzy. That's what I'm about to show them. Yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't like that. Right here. He didn't like that. And then um, my hope is that today, with the sun being out, that clears up. And then the snow is supposed to come back in heavy tomorrow, midday. So if we leave early, our hope is to outrun the snowstorm across the highway uh, before it gets covered again. Really to get past any weather issue, we only have to make it about a little over 200 miles. Because once we get past the 200 mile threshold, we'll come down the last 
of those two passes in the middle of Eastern Oregon. Stinkwater? Stinkwater and Drinkwater will come down. That, that, that's really their name, Stinkwater and Drinkwater yeah. Pass. And ask us how we know. Uh, when we come down that pass, we'll drop into that valley and we go to uh, uh, Gentura mm -hmm. and then Vale. And once we're to Gentura, we're... Yo, uh, dude from Vale who messaged me saying... Yeah, where's uh, that guy? So, yeah, my bad. Uh, someone messaged me from Vail saying they had a, a bunch of willies and international truck collection and all that, asking if we wanted to stop by. We really do. We want to check it out. Both of us do. But uh, I cannot find that message anywhere. I've tried and tried and tried. Message me again. And uh, we, we want to line that up and make that happen. So one of the things that got checked off the list is now added back to the list. The brand new power steering pump is not uh, working. working. To the right a little, did you see that? I, it looked like you were struggling every which way you could. Yeah, but I could, it, even uh, Brandon was like, oh hey, I hear it, because you could hear it moving. I don't you know, know if it, it's just cavitating, it's sucking right. air, what, but brand new power steering pump so all I can tell you was working and now it's not working. So we just put a new battery in the trailer of Ben's trailer, in the trailer of in Ben's trailer. And I went and asked Jordan for a crescent wrench. He actually got me a crescent wrench. The, the, the silver lining of this whole debacle you so far. You keep talking about silver linings and it just keeps being more work no, to do. No, what, I'm, what, I, what I'm, I'm happy about is anytime that we have had to reach out to somebody for help, like a oh, battery yes. even, every single person in the last 12 days that I've reached out to has just dropped what they're doing. Literally, the interstate battery guy, he was all the way across town, servicing another customer. I called him, I told him what was going on, we short time frame. He finished up with his customer, jumped in his truck, drove over here with the correct battery for the trailer, swapped it out with the silly wrench. Crescent wrench. But every single person that I've called around Custom this exhaust town, specialties. Yeah, Shane from Custom Exhaust Specialties. Gavin, who relit the transmission. Yeah, Elite Fleet Automotive Elite today. Fleet. Yeah, like everybody. Uh, Ryan, Ryan with Cornwell Tools. Yep. He showed up here in his tool truck to do his tool truck thing. Yep. Saw what we had going on. Did Started he? Started making phone he calls. He was just on the people. phone because, like, a tool truck guy drives around to a whole lot of shops. He knows where some parts are. So he started making phone calls. Yeah. Help and, find parts. And tomorrow on the road, we'll we'll just when we have lots of time, we'll yeah. go down the whole list of everybody that's helped us in the last. Yeah, because like it's been it's a huge. lot, yeah. and I'm super thankful. Yeah. 12 days, 13 days, whatever it was. Today's day 13, yeah. So now Ben is heading home with that truck. Uh, him and Kevin are gonna scramble a bunch more. I am heading to work, and then uh, I gotta get home and pack after that, and then get this truck ready to go since we're now going to tow it down with this truck, and we leave at like five or six o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. This is just a quick little update because it's all, uh, any of us really have time to do. So next time you see us, uh, hopefully we're in this truck with that truck on the trailer behind it and we are starting our road trip a uh, thousand miles down to Utah, but we'll be a little more comfortable at least. So there, there's the bonus. Well, I was really hoping we could drive that truck down there, but we both were, but um, it's just not quite gonna work out and we actually do need to make it there. So um, we'll have it running while we're there. We'll at least have that. So. We'll see you guys tomorrow.